Shubhlim Shetron Raji Bismillah Rahman Rahim Our dear students, uh, welcome to my lecture number 42. Today I will teach you uh, about uh, uh, thrombolytic agents. So first of all, uh, I am going to uh, cover your objective. This is your course objective. So look at here. So uh, in this unit, uh, we will uh, discuss about the uh, main classification of thrombolytic therapy. Uh, discuss the uh, mood of action or mechanism of action of different thrombolytic therapy and uh, we should also discuss the nursing responsibility during thrombolytic therapy. Uh, now come to our, uh, the introduction of thrombolytic agents. Thrombolytic agents uh, can be defined as those, those agents or those drugs uh, which are used uh, in the treatment of whenever uh, there is uh, the formation of clot at the level of blood vessels. Uh, so in order to improve uh, the blood flow and prevent uh, damage to the tissue and organs. So these uh, agents are known as thrombolytic agents. So once again, uh, I will define the thrombolytic agents or those drugs or those agents whenever there is the formation of clots at the level of blood vessels, especially in, inside the blood vessels. So in order to dissolve these dangerous conditions, uh, we should improve the blood in order to improve the blood vessel, the blood flow and prevent the damage to the tissue and organs. The thrombolytic agents, uh, they are available. Uh, today they are serine proteases uh, that converting the plasminogen to the natural fibrinolytic agent, for example, flasmines. So, plasmine uh, lyses uh, the clots by uh, breaking down the fibrinogen and fibrin uh, content in a clot. Uh, dear student, uh, sometime uh, you will have observed um, that uh, there is uh, the formation of clot uh, like uh, thromboembolism and sometimes there is a clot formation, uh, blood there, clot inside the blood vessels. So uh, actually at that time the blood flow to all uh, different tissues uh, become decreased. So in order to solve these problems, uh, different drugs they are used, so thrombolytic agents are those drugs uh, actually uh, these thrombolytic agents they are used in order to improve uh, or enhance the blood flow toward different tissues and prevent damage to the tissue and organs. Uh, these are the categories uh, which are given here. Fibrinolytics uh, agents, they are divided into two categories. The first one is fibrin, which is specific agent and the second one is non-fibrin that is called also specific agents. Now what is fibrin? Uh, fibrin can be uh, defined as uh, these are the specific agents includes altiplase uh, and retiplase recombinant plasminogen activators and uh, tinectiplase uh, produce limited plasminogen convergence especially in the absence of fibrin and non fibrin specific agents for example uh, these are in the form of uh, streptokinase uh, catalase and uh, systemic fibrinolysis after that we will talk about the uh, different uh, thrombolytic agents the most commonly uh, used uh, clot uh, busting drugs which are also known as thrombolytic agents which include the following drug that is called aminase which is also known as any streplase and retaways that is called retiplase and um, Syriptase that is called streptokinase. It means that uh, actually uh, these drugs so they are available especially in the market uh, by different trade names by different manufacturing company and that is called TPA tissue plasminogen activators and this one is called tinectiplase and the uh, last one is abokinase. So these are the uh, different type of thrombolytic agents which are used especially in emergency condition like whenever there is clot formation which is prone at the level of blood vessels. So in order to enhance and increase the blood flow these drugs can be uh, given to the patient. For example thromboembolism occurs so whenever there is emboli formation occurs especially or the gases which are developed inside the blood vessels. So at that time these thrombolytic agents can be directly administered to the patients or it may be in the form of especially in the form of infusions. Uh, if you remember, uh, whenever there is clot formation, uh, especially 
uh, in your blood vessels uh, it may be at any level so at that time streptokinase injections uh, you may know better so actually these are administered uh, in order to increase the uh, blood flow so that's why it came under the category of thrombolytic uh, agents what are the risk factor what are the risk of thrombolytic agent if thrombolytic agents they are used so uh, there uh, may be a chances of uh, risk so you will have to uh, administer uh, these injections uh, with precautionary measurements that is that first of all you will have to check the condition of the patients either we can administer the drug or not so in uh, this case uh, especially whenever there is risk of thrombolytic agent so in that case uh, whenever there is severe high blood pressure so in case of high blood pressure hypertension these thrombolytic agents cannot be administered to the patient and uh, while in case of whenever there is active bleeding on severe blood loss so in case of blood loss the thrombolytic agent they are also restricted uh, while um, in case of um, hemorrhagic shock whenever there is blood loss uh, hemorrhagic stroke from especially bleeding in the brain so this drug cannot be administered uh, it cannot be also given to the a patient who have severe kidney disease or who have done recent surgery uh, sometime during bruising or bleeding at the excess site so um, there may be chances of risk and especially uh, let's suppose if your blood vessels they are damaged and these drug they cannot be recommended For example, uh, whenever there is migration of the blood clot to another part of the vascular system, so there may be uh, there may be hundred percent risk of uh, thrombolytic agent administrations. Uh, if there is kidney damage, let's suppose if the kidney of the patient is damaged uh, due to diabetes mellitus, so at that time thrombolytic agents, so they are there may be hundred percent chance uh, risk of thrombolytic agent if they are used, especially in this condition whenever there is kidney damage in a patient with diabetes these are the clinical indication of different thrombolytic agents for example streptokinase as we know that streptokinase as we know that whenever uh, there is elevation of st elevations uh, my colleague and fortune you have study in the uh, ecg electrocardiograms uh, peak or st st elevations especially the peaks which are uh, uh, develop uh, during uh, um, ECG electrocardiograms. So, uh, streptokinase, uh, uh, so mean clinically, so uh, they are indicated for uh, myocardial infarction. So, they are used in the management of myocardial infarction. So, whenever there is myocardial infarction, death of the uh, segment of the myocardial muscle, so these drugs can be uh, administered. While in case of arterial thrombosis, so in case of arterial thrombosis, these drugs can be used. As we have already discussed, that whenever there is emboli formation in the blood, so at that time, uh, this drug can be administered in order to enhance the blood flow uh, after that uh, these streptokinase can be also uh, used for the management of uh, DVT deep venous thrombosis and uh, these are also indicated for pulmonary embolisms and as well as uh, they are recommended for intra arterial intravenous catheter occlusion so this point is clear um, TPA tissue plus minogen activator as we know this is another uh, agent thrombolytic agents so they're clinically so they are used in the treatment of myocardial infarction so it can be used to uh, you can treat uh, acute myocardial infarction whenever there is the death of the myocardial muscle in the blood supply toward different organs decreases uh, they're also used especially in acute cerebrovascular thrombosis and as well as in pulmonary embolism because whenever there is tons of embolism embolism so actually these uh, these plasminogen activator they are used for what purpose in order to enhance and increase the blood supply um, especially they are also used uh, in the central venous catheter occlusions whenever there is uh, let's suppose blockage occlusion mean blockage in the catheters so it means this drug can be um, administered Uh, these are the ADR adverse effects which are reported by the uh, different thrombolytic agents so that may be in the form of non-cardiogenic uh, pulmonary uh, redema uh, so especially these are the ADRs uh, which are reported by the different 
literature review, uh, especially whenever the overdosing occurs. So in case of overdosing, there may be chances of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, there may be chance of hypertension, so the blood pressure will become down, while in case of fever and showering, so uh, it may cause, it may produce the severe complications like fever and showering, and it may, there, when it, uh, it may cause the history of cerebrovascular uh, hemorrhage. Uh, as well as uh, there is a marked uh, type of hypertension like uh, ACP, so when it is greater than 180 mmHg. Uh, this is called systolic arterial pressure. When the systolic arterial pressure, so they are, uh, they, they are the systolic arterial pressure is greater than 180 mm of Hg uh, per, as you can say, mmHg and the uh, DAP uh, diastolic arterial pressure that is greater than 110 mm of Hg. So it means so this is a severe uh, kind of hypertension and there may be chances of collision of the blood vessels. Your blood vessel will become collapsed and uh, you know that there is uh, a dodic compensatory uh, relationship uh, between uh, kidneys heart and uh, you can say brains so whenever there is any kind of disorder in the kidney so your blood pressure they cannot maintain uh, due to your uh, blood pressure uh, fluctuation as well as sometime uh, there is inadequacy or insufficient flow of blood uh, toward your brain uh, as well as, um, and in other words, in simple words, we can say whenever there is suspicion of aortic dissection, if aortic dissections, especially uh, aortic dissection, this is also the ADR adverse drug effect which is reported by they uh, mean after the administration of these agents. Uh, there may be chances of actio uh, internal uh, bleedings. Contraindications, uh, so now what are the condition in which uh, these uh, thrombolytic agents especially they cannot be used, especially uh, the in case of whenever there is history of chronic, severe and poorly controlled hypertension, so they cannot be used, while when there is the history of pre ischemic stroke, you know an ischemic stroke actually, this, uh, the blood supply toward different tissue, different organ, toward brain, so it becomes what? It becomes saturated, it becomes decreased. In case of dementia, so especially, especially when man memory lapses, when your memories, so they become so, especially in case of dementia, uh, loss of memories. Uh, while in case of recent internal bleeding, so these drugs cannot be uh, recommended and when there is no compressible uh, vascular puncture, so these drugs cannot be used. Uh, for example, if there is pregnant, uh, for example, if the uh, female and she is pregnant, so especially in pregnancy, so this drug cannot be used. While the current use of anticoagulant uh, warparin, so they are also especially contra, they are contra indicated, it cannot be used in uh, these conditions. Uh, dear student, uh, thank you so much for watching my lecture um, about the uh, thrombolytic agents. So, inshallah, I will also share about the uh, different uh, nursing cares uh, regarding uh, thrombolytic agents, how these drugs are used. Uh, thank you.